Good evening. I'm Super Tommy, and this is OUR News. The first story tonight is about the latest viral sensation that's sweeping social media. Wordle is a free web-based word game that's flooding social feeds with mysterious green and gray squares. The game was created by Josh Wordle for his girlfriend who... Oh, wait a minute. It looks like I'm getting some breaking news. It looks like the New York Times has just acquired the game. This likely means the game won't suddenly disappear for the millions who play it every day. Ah, I see I'm being fact-checked. It looks like the New York Times is just initially going to be keeping the game free. Well, gameplay rules really can't be owned, otherwise the people behind Mastermind should really lawyer up because now there is somebody to sue. And that also means we can make our own version, but in 3D, called Word L 3D. See, it's not Wordle. So New York Times, keep your lawyers at bay. We'll be using 3JS and React to bring this to life. The key parts that we'll be discussing are creating a 3JS app within a React app, creating text in 3JS, adding an outline to 3D objects, dynamically changing colors of materials, and communicating between React and 3JS. We bootstrapped the project using VJS to create a React slash TypeScript project and then added 3JS. To help us with styling UI and components, we added React Bulma components and added Font Awesome since we'll need at least the backspace delete icon. The app layout is fairly simple with a title bar at the top, keyboard at the bottom, and the game board in the middle. To do that, we're gonna use Flexbox to stack everything vertically and then create two React components, a board panel component and a input panel component. What we end up with is gonna look like this. Now the board panel is where our 3JS app is going to live and we're gonna create a custom React hook called use 3D board to bootstrap our 3JS app. Now in this function, we are gonna create our camera, our renderer, and our scene. Our scene is a custom Wordle scene that will put all our logic, the core logic for the Wordle game. We have a basic game loop that just calls render every request animation frame tick. Our Wordle scene is very simple right now. All we have is a light, but the key player in this scene is going to be our tile class. The tile class represents each one of the squares on the Wordle board that we can put a letter into. To create a tile, we'll need to have loaded a font, which we'll do later. But let's look at our set letter method here. It is responsible for creating a text mesh each time we change a letter or set a new one. To do that, we're gonna create a text geometry. Now this class is imported from the 3JS examples and we'll have to give it a font and a size and then we can combine it with a material to create a mesh. You'll notice that we're scaling down our text mesh instead of setting a smaller size in our text geometry. We do this because text geometry doesn't come out well at sizes that are too small. Then to keep our letters centered in the tile, we're gonna get the bounding box of the letter and subtract half width and half height. We're gonna wanna make sure we scale down those values just like our text mesh was. Then the last thing is to set our letter property with the incoming letter value. Before we can use our tile class, we'll need to load a font. Import the font loader from 3 slash examples, then create a font property in our Wordle scene. Next, create an async preload method where we'll load our font JSON. To get a font JSON, you can take a font from your computer or at sites like 1001 Free Fonts. Once you have a font that you want to use, go to the facetype.js tool. We'll link it to you in the description box below. Upload the font and it'll return back to you a typeface.js font file. Next, we can import our tile class into our Wordle scene, then add a start method where we'll create our grid of tiles. To make this all happen, we need to call scene.preload then scene.start in our use3d board hook. And now we've got a pretty nice looking grid of tiles. Next, we're going to start handling key input, which means we're going to need to store game state. We're going to use MobX for that since it makes it easy to share state between our React app and our 3JS app. Here we have game state that stores the index of the current guess and the potential value of all six guesses. Notice that we're using make auto observable to let MobX do its magic. Then we have two actions and add letter action, which is what we'll call to add a letter to the current guess. The other action is for deleting a letter when we hit backspace. Then in the input panel component, we're going to import star as store to import our game state. We're calling it store because that's a convention that's used in React. Then in the handle key function that gets called each time a key button is pressed, 
we'll call store.addLetter to add a letter, and if backspace is pressed, we'll call store.delete letter. We need to let our 3JS app know about these changes, so go to Wordle scene and import our game state. Then add a handle letter changes method and import the auto run function from MobX. Auto run is going to automatically run when game state changes. Here we're going to update the tiles associated with the current guess depending on whether the player added more letters or deleted letters. And here's what we've got so far, we can type letters out and see them in the 3JS app. Next let's handle submitting a guess. A guess must be at least 5 letters long. If it's not, then we can't submit it. Then let's add a submit word action that simply increments the current guess index. Then in our input panel component, we simply call store.submitWord. The logic for what happens is going to be in our Wordle scene. So let's add a new method called handle word submit, call it after handle letter changes, and then inside handle word submit, we're going to call auto run and pass in a function. We'll get the guess that was just submitted and then check each letter to see if it's not in the word, in the word and in the right place, or in the word and in the wrong place. You'll notice that we're hard coding the word. For a proper clone of Wordle, we'll need to get this word from a central place. In this video, we're going to focus on 3JS instead. Depending on if or where a letter is in a word, each tile is going to change color accordingly. That logic needs to be implemented in the setState method of the tile class. What we'll do is update the tiles material and the text meshes material with the values from color for state. All right, here's how it looks as we submit words. You see the tiles are changing colors. Remember, our word is games, so double check me that the colors are actually doing the right thing. Next, we're going to add outlines. To add outlines, we're going to need the effect composer, a render pass, and an outline pass from three slash examples. Then create an effect composer and a render pass. We'll add our render pass to our composer. Then we can create an outline pass and then add that outline pass to our composer as well. Then go to our tick function and replace renderer.render with composer.render. The outline pass needs to know which objects it should outline, so we're going to pass it into our Wordle scene in the start method, and in the start method, each time that we create a new tile, we're going to add that tile to the outline pass's selected objects array. And that's the outline pass applied to each tile. Now this is a 3D app, but everything feels kind of flat. So let's add some orbit controls to let us explore this 3D world a little bit. First, let's import orbit controls from 3 slash examples. Then we can create the controls right under the camera. We'll set some mins and maxes as well as disable, zoom, and pan to limit how far we can actually move. Finally, let's call controls.update in our tick function. And there it is, we can click and drag to see the game board from different angles. The source code for this project is linked in the description box below, but there's still quite a few features we haven't implemented for a full game. Things like making sure everyone gets the same word every day, making sure you can only play once a day, sharing on social media, disallowing words that just aren't real, and probably a whole lot more. But this video was really about 3JS. So check out this video over here if you want more of an in-depth look at getting started with 3JS for games. Now let's see if I can still play Wordle or if the New York Times already made it no longer free.